Okay, while we're on the topic of how to install a subfloor, I've got to address this one issue, which is people seem to be obsessed with the notion that we have to frame out our subfloors, otherwise the insulation will crush. And so today I want to settle this once and for all by proving that not only is the crush rating of this foam board high enough to support anything you might put on it in your bus, it's high enough to support the weight of the bus itself. Now I've never done an experiment like this. I've you know, got my calculations and reasons to believe it won't be a problem. But today I'm going to take a piece of this four inch Fomular NGX 250 with a compressive strength of 25 PSI and put on top of it a piece of this Advantech three quarter inch subfloor material. And then I'm gonna put it underneath the back wheels of this bus and see if it can hold up the weight of my bus. I think it's gonna be a great experiment. We'll settle this once for all so that all the people who insist we have to frame out our subfloors can finally be silenced. All right, I'm gonna grab my massive jack, lift this bus up, and uh, we'll plop it down on top of this foam and see what we get. Well, this gives me reason to get out my massive speed jack. Biggest one I've ever seen. <laughs> get that under the pumpkin there. Let's see. All right. Hello. Okay, so we've got our bus floating in the air, our four inch Fomular 250, and then a piece of three quarter inch subfloor material on that. I'm gonna go and lower this down and we'll see what happens. This is gonna be exciting. Ben, you wanna watch this? Predictions? I think because of the way it's jacked, that it's gonna crush a little, maybe on the back side, cause that'll go down first. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just gonna sit right on it. Here we go. Ha! Huh? The jack is out. I mean, look at that. It's like, didn't even crush. <sighs> okay, so the jack totally removed. And I mean, it didn't even, it didn't crush at all. And we've got the whole weight of the bus resting up on it. No tricks here, nothing under there. <laughs> Look at that, vindicated. All right, I'm gonna pull the plywood off and let's see how much of a dent we made in this foam. <laughs> I mean, nothing on this side and maybe a line, but like my finger doesn't even catch on that edge. So we guesstimated that to be Somewhere around just shy of 4,000 pounds, like 3,500 to 4,000 pounds we just had on that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so Ben and I, ever this, the pair of scientists, we got a piece of uh, 150 here, which has a compressive strength of 15 PSI, it says right there. And uh, we're gonna drop the bus down on this and um, do a little compare and contrast and see, see what we get. Formula R150 crush test. Yeah. And I think we're down all the way. Jack's free. This one really didn't crush much. I think, I mean, it might not have crushed at all. It looks like it crushed a little more, but. Go back up? Yeah. 
We'll take it back up and see what kind of shape we're in here. This is good science, you know? See if you really need to worry about the 250 or not. We've pretty much only used 250. Uh, yeah, we use the 150 in, for insulation in our doors. Just about there. All right. Let's uh, bring the camera over and we'll pull that piece of ply off and see what we got. <laughs> it looks fine. Can you feel anything? No. A little bit right there. Yeah. Wow. So pretty awesome. Yeah, 15 PSI doesn't feel like much, but distributed load like that. Yeah. It's not gonna crush. I mean, this really all comes down to honestly the uh, subfloor material you're using, because that's what's gonna distribute the load. Point loading, you know, I mean, I can stick my finger, you know, make a little dent in it, but awesome. Well, that was a fantastic experiment. Thanks to Ben, my science partner here. And I think the big takeaway from that is you don't really have to use the uh, Fomular 250 in your floor if you can't find it. Around here, the 150 and 250 are the same price. The 250 is harder to find, but I think I'll probably still keep using it because why not? I think the big takeaway is recognizing the importance of your subfloor material and its ability to distribute point loading and disperse that out over a wider contact patch with the foam so that it doesn't crush. And along those lines, I think that also highlights the importance of whatever material you use, making sure that it is a tongue and groove type material so that the seams you have lock in and tie together structurally so that any load placed near the edge is distributed onto the adjacent subfloor panel. So that's why we use tongue and groove. We only use tongue and groove products for our subfloor, either the plywood or this Advantech subflooring material. And if you look, it's got a tongue on this side, a groove on the other side, and you know, just like a hardwood floor, they lock together. Um, I think the last thing you want, no matter how you do your subfloor, is to have butt joints just flapping in the breeze there. Nobody likes a butt flapping in the breeze. Um, fun experiment. Thanks for watching that one. Uh, I hope it helps you feel more confident in the choices you make regarding your subfloor. Don't frame it. No need to. Save the time, save the money, save the energy. You'll need it later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>